to check whether the double entry system we were following has been correctly followed or not. Because, you know, there are a lot of debit credits going on. So if there is any mistake of debit and credit, we can catch while making trial balance. So that is why we call it trial balance. Trial balance means that it's a statement, it's a worksheet in which we check, we try the balances in, we followed in nominal ledger accounts. So can you see my laptop screen now? Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. Now starting from the beginning, if you can see, there is a cash account, right? Okay. And what is the balance of this cash account? The balance of the cash account is debit balance. 15,000. Huh? No, no. 6,800. Yeah, I'm talking about balance. I'm not talking about the total. Okay. Okay. So why this balance is coming? Because, you know, uh, during event one, our cash account was increased by $10,000. Okay. And during event two, our cash decreased by 6,000. But during event three, our cash decreased by 2,000. And during event four, our cash increased by 5,000. And during event seven, our cash also decreased by 200. So the total will be 15,000, right? So if you take the difference, the difference come out to be 6,800. And you know, the debit side is heavier. If you take the total of the debit side, 10 plus five, it comes out to be 15. And if you take the total of the credit side, it comes out to be 8,200. So the difference will be 6,800 and it is because of debit balance. So that is why we call it debit balance. So in the trial balance, we will, list number one and the head of account is the cash account and the balance of the cash account is debit so we will write this debit balance 6800 is this clear debit okay but uh, why did you put uh, 6800 under debit yeah, because, you know, it is a debit balance. Now. This is the debit balance. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because debit side is heavier and credit side mm -hmm. is shorter. So that is why the balance is debit balance. So that is why we are putting on the debit side, right? Normally, okay. normally the students, they get confused because... You know, this balance is written on the credit side. If you can see, this is the credit side, right? So they yeah. might think that this balance will be credit balance. But in fact, this is not the credit balance. Why? Because we are writing this balance on the credit side because the credit side is shorter. You know, the total of the credit side is 8,200. 6,200 plus 100. It is 8,200. Mm -hmm. So in order to balance the account, because we need total of 15,000 on either side. So we need to put 6,800 on the credit side. Okay. Yeah, but the balance will be the debit balance. Okay. okay. Then we have uh, next capital account. So if you can see, the balance is the credit balance. Okay, now it is, it is credit balance. Why? Because there is only one entry of even one 10,000 of the credit side and the total will be the 10,000. So the difference comes out to be in the debit side, 10,000. So we call it credit balance, right? So now we write here okay. to me and we put the name of the capital account and the balance will be written on the credit side which is 10,000. Is this clear, John? Yes. If you, have, if you have any kind of confusion, please do let me know because we need to understand it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Perfect. After that, we have third account, which is called building account. Now we have a debit entry on the debit side, which is $6,000.
and the total comes out to be 6,000. And obviously we need to put 6,000 on the credit side so that we can have a balance taken. So this balance will be debit or credit. What do you think? Yeah, in, in credit. No, it's again a debit balance. Because we are writing it on the credit side. Why? Because the debit side is heavier. So you just need to learn this thing that when you have a carry down balance, carry down balance on a credit uh, side. Okay. If you have a carry down balance on the credit side, you will call it debit balance. If you have a carry down balance on the debit side, you will call it credit balance. Is this clear? Yeah, yeah, sure. Because, you know, again, just have a look. While we have event two, our building was increased because of 6,000 and the reason was cash because we purchased building by paying cash. So this mm -hmm. is the only entry in the building account. So total comes out to be 6,000 and the balance carried down will be the 6,000. So we will write here number three. And we put the name of the head of account, which is building account. And the balance will be debit balance. So we will write here this equal to and the debit balance 6, is 6,000. After that, we have another account, which is called office equipment account. Now you need to tell me that is it a debit balance or credit balance? It's a debit. Absolutely right. Absolutely. Why it is debit balance? Because there is only one entry on the debit side on event three. So in event mm. three, we purchased this office equipment. So our office equipment increased because of cash. So this is the only debit entry. So the total will be 2000 and we need to put 2000 on the credit side in order to balance the ledger account. So we are writing it on the credit side. Why? Because we need to balance it and it has got the debit nature absolutely right. So we'll put here number four. And the name of the account is office equipment account. And the balance should be debit balance. So we'll write this debit balance here. 2000. Perfect. Okay, now we have this account, bank loan account. Now just have a look at here and tell me what is the balance, debit or credit? One event. Oh no, the event is there. So it will be in credit. Absolutely right. Absolutely. It will be credit balance. Why? Because there is only one transaction which was on yeah. event four. And uh, this is our banking account, non credit liability. So it increased because of cash. We took loan from the bank of 5,000. So mm. there is only one entry on the credit side. So total comes out to be 5,000. And the balance you put on the debit side is 5,000. That is absolutely right. So that will be credit balance. Number six, we have purchases account. Now you have to tell me what balance does it have? Debit or credit? In purchases account, it should be in debit. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Can you explain me why it is debit balance? Because there is only one event which is on the uh, debit side. Absolutely. And we balance it with credit so that mm -hmm. it will be on a balance 3000 Perfect. Now we have a trade payable account and its balance is credit balance, right? Because now you can understand everything very clearly. Yeah. Absolutely. Now number eight. So we have trade receivables and the balance is debit balance because it is debit. Yeah. And then we have this sales income account number nine. That will be in credit. Yeah. But I'm asking you again, you have to watch the debit credit ledger account video again and again so that you can understand it. Otherwise, you cannot understand how we are making this travel balance, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we need to make another ledger account, which is the electricity account. This is only one account which is left behind. So let me make it.
with silent electricity right now. So how do we make the ledger, if you remember? So if you can see this general entry, the electricity account is debited by 200. So we'll put here 200 is equal to 200. 200. And the reference we put here is because of cash current asset accounts. And it was happened on event seven. So if you balance this account, it comes out to be 200, 200, and the balance carry down will be 200 as well. So we have account number 10. So I put here electricity account, and the balance will be on the debit side. Now we have to check on it. The debit side. Yeah, whether the trial balance is balanced or not. So if we get the trial balance equal to debit and credit side, it means that whatever uh, double entry we follow is absolutely right. So we'll check here the total, and you have to take the sum of all the items, and that should be coming out equal, I mean, is equal to sum. You put the formula in Excel. So the total is 22,500, right? So yes. we need to check that whether we have got the same uh, total on the credit side. So it is also 22,700. So you can see that both sides are equal. So that shows that the double entry system which we were following, which we have been following, is absolutely right and the total is equal. So if we get the trial balance imbalance, it means that there is some problem and we need to rectify it. Okay. Oh, okay. Now is this clear? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Now after that we have to prepare our financial statements. So we have to understand it because when we prepare financial statements, we know that there are five elements, uh, assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. So we categorize income and expense in our income statement account, asset, liabilities, and capital account in our statement of financial position. Now we have to categorize it. So if I talk about this cash account, so you tell me uh, which element is this, asset, liability, equity, income, or expense? Cash account. So this is current asset account, right? You can see cash current asset account. So we always write it on SOFP statement of financial position. We always present our current asset account in a statement of financial position. Next account we have equity and this is capital equity account. Again, we always write it in statement of financial position. Then we have building. Building is again our non-current assets. So we'll write in a statement of financial position. Office equipment is also our non-current asset statement of financial position. Bank loan is our non-current liability statement of financial position. Purchases expense is our expense. So we put in a statement of profit and loss. Trade payables is our liability statement of financial position. Trade receivable is asset statement of financial position. Sales income is our income, so statement of profit or loss. Electricity expense, so statement of profit or loss. So you can see that we are categorizing our expenses and income in a statement of profit loss. Is this clear? John, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So we will categorize our income and expense in a statement of profit loss account and assets, liabilities, and equity in a statement of financial position. Now just have a look at how do we prepare. So we'll write the name of the business masters. Let's suppose the name of the business is uh Bassers. Mm. Yahoo Limited, right? And we are preparing statement of statement of profit or loss. 
for the year ended for the year ended let's suppose 31st of december 2023 that is how we prepare this is the format simple format of statement of profit or loss okay so we start with sales so you can see that in the trial balance the sales are given and how much is that 4500 so we will write sales here then we subtract our cost of sale cost of sales so you need to learn this format it is very simple and how do we subtract cost of sale first we take opening inventory inventories then we add purchases and then we subtract closing inventory that is how we calculate cost of sale now in this particular case we do not have opening inventory zero we have purchases and if you can see it is 3000 and again we do not have closing inventory so it will be zero So the total will be cost of sale and you will take it up from the total and that will be only 3000. So you will write within the bracket because yeah. So this is your cost of sale. Is this clear? Any confusion? Uh, no. Okay, perfect. So how do we calculate cost of sale? Opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory. And then we find out our cost of sale. This is our cost of sale and this is our sale. So when we subtract cost of sale from sales, we get the gross profit. So sales minus cost of sale to get the crossbow. Now we need to subtract the expense and we have only one expense which is electricity. Electricity expense. Electricity expense. And you can see the amount of electricity expense which is 200. So your net profit will be net profit will be 1500 minus 200 so your net profit will be 30 that is how we create a simple statement of profit or loss by considering our trial balance so you can see that we have taken this sale as our income and this portion okay let me highlight it for you so i will highlight the green color because this is our income and this portion from cost of sale calculation is our expense. So I will highlight with orange. Then we have electricity expense. This is again expense. And the profit obviously will be with the green color. Is this clear? Yeah. Perfect. Now we will create our statement of financial position, which we also call it as a balance sheet. And the format will be, header will be same. Only we change here statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. And we write here as on 31st of December, 2023, because we only take uh, the balance of a particular day. So we'll write here dollars, dollars. So we create two columns here. Okay, now first we consider the non-current assets. Non-current assets. And if you can see in the question, in the trial balance, we have some non-current assets. So first of all, we have, if you can see building, building is our non-current asset. And the amount of the building is, is equal to 6,000 six six thousand. Thousand. 
Then we have another non print test which is called office equipment. Office equipment. And the amount is 2000. Yes. So we can have the total here. We put line here and we take the total. So 2000 plus 6000. This is our non print assets. Then we take our current assets. So if you can see, first of all, we have uh, closing inventory, but in this case, we do not have any closing inventory. So we write here closing inventory. Closing inventories, but the balance is zero because we have sold all the inventories we purchased. Then we have trade receivables. If you can see the question, and the amount of trade receivable is 4,500. Okay. Another asset we have is cash, which is very important. And the balance of the cash is six thousand eight hundred. So we take the total outside, and it will be six thousand eight hundred plus forty five, and the total comes out to be. 11,300 plus 80. So this is our total assets. Total assets. Is this clear so far? Yeah, it's clear. Perfect. Now you can see we need to take the equity. And first we take capital which is given in the question and the amount of equity is sorry the capital is 10,000 and we also add net profit here because the profit is also the part of the equity so it is 1300 so we take the total 1300 plus 10,000 then we take our non current liabilities, non current liabilities, and in this question, we have for non current liabilities, which is basically our bank loan. If you can see here, we have bank loan, and the amount is 5000. Then we take our current liabilities. And we have only one current liability, I think, which is trade payables. And there is no other current liability. And the amount of the current liability is 3,000. So your total will be, should be the same because this is what we have learned that the sum of equity and your liability should be equal to the sum of total assets. Now you can see this is equity and liabilities. Yes, now you can clearly see the sum of equity and liabilities are equal to the sum of total assets. Is this clear? Yeah. Yeah, that is how we produce our statement of financial position of that is what we call it balance sheet. Now, if you have any kind of questions, just do let me know. Or uh, if I advise you to, to just note it by your own self. Do you have pen paper with you? Yes, I yes, have. Sir. Yeah, I would advise you guys to note it by your own self. Because when you do it by your own self, then you will learn it more. 